subatomic versus diatomic. Most elements can exist and are written as a single atom, such as copper is just written Cu, zinc is written Zn, carbon is just right, written C. But there are seven elements which cannot exist as a single atom and must be written as two atoms together when they occur free in nature or uncombined into a compound. Those seven elements we refer to as diatomic elements. There are seven of them. They start at number seven and they make a seven. So we have nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and then hydrogen, because it's never in with the group. So those seven elements, when they're by themselves, are going to be two. When they're in a compound like sodium chloride, we don't care about diatomic at that point because it's combined with sodium. So what exactly is a mole? A mole is a unit used in chemistry which represents a particular number of particles. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd to be exact. A mole is similar to a dozen because both terms represent a, nu represent a number. A dozen eggs is 12 eggs. Well, a mole of eggs would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd eggs. So a whole lot of eggs. We refer to as, we refer to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd as Avogadro's number. And that's a picture of Avogadro. Just like a dozen pencils is going to have a different mass than a dozen elephants, a mole of sodium has a different mass than a mole of iron atoms. That mass is referred to as molar mass. Molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance. The units for molar mass are grams per mole. The abbreviation for mole is MOL. You're not saving a lot of space, but you can drop the E for an abbreviation. So I could abbreviate grams per mole by G for grams and MOL for mole. Let's look at how to solve for the molar mass of diphosphorus pentaoxide. We're going to be following the steps that are on your paper and you'll see this problem at the bottom of your page. So step one is you have to write a correct formula for the compound. It's super important that you can write a correct formula. If you mess up on the formula, everything else is going to be messed up. So diphosphorus pentaoxide is two P's and five oxygens. Next, we're going to find the average atomic mass, which is on the periodic table for each element. So P is 30.97 grams and oxygen is right at 16. We're going to multiply those average atomic masses by however many atoms we have in that element. So I had two P's and five oxygens. So my mass of P times two and my mass of oxygen times five. Finally, I'm going to add those numbers up and put units on my answer. So 61.94 and 80 gives me a final answer of 100. 41.94 grams per mole. So we're going to go through those same steps again. So step one is I needed to write a correct formula. So I'm going to say calcium is a plus two and phosphate is a polyatomic ion. So I get three calciums and two phosphates. So step one, write a correct equation. Step two, I'm going to say that I have calcium and calcium's molar mass or average atomic mass from the periodic table is 40.08. But I have 
three calciums. And then I have phosphorus, so I'm breaking up that polyatomic ion. I have P, and phosphorus has a molar mass of 30.97. And I have two times one or two phosphoruses. And finally, I have oxygen. Oxygen, like we saw a second ago, has a mass of 16. And I have four times two or eight oxygens. I'm going to add all three of those numbers up. To give me a final answer of 310.18 grams per mole. going to pause the video and solve this left column on your own. Restart once you've solved the left column. Make sure that you're putting units on your answers. So you should have gotten 70.9, 56.11, 79.91, and 162.2, and all of those are grams per mole. Go ahead and pause the video and now solve these on the right. Restart when you have answers. So you should have gotten 352.03, 64.07, 98 gram, and 132.17. This last one was probably the hardest one. We had two nitrogens, we have eight hydrogens, one sulfur, and four oxygens. Remember that you're multiplying the number on the outside by the subscript. So two times one and then two times four. What if you wanna know the mass of a quantity more or less than one mole? Or if you're given an amount of grams and want to know how many moles that quantity is. We can use dimensional analysis and use the conversion factor of one mole equals the molar mass to solve those types of problems. So an example of that type of problem would be this one. It says that I have 200 grams of calcium carbonate and we want to know how many moles that is. So to start these problems, we're going to start with what's given. So 200 grams, 200 grams, and you need to write the substance as well, calcium carbonate. Well, calcium is a plus two, carbonate is a polyatomic ion with a negative two, so CaCO3. So make sure that you're putting units, the grams as well as the substance units. Whatever unit is here has to go in the bottom right. So I know this has to be grams of calcium carbonate. And I'm trying to convert to moles. I do know a conversion for grams to moles, so I can put moles on top. My conversion is always one mole equals so many grams. So it's gonna be one mole of calcium carbonate. Everything in this unit will be one mole of calcium carbonate or one mole of the given substance. And to find my mass, I'm gonna look on the periodic table. I know that calcium is 40.08. I know carbon is 12.01. And I know oxygen is 16, but I have three of them. So finding my molar mass, I get 100 0.09 grams. So again, I found the molar mass of calcium carbonate and that's what's going with grams. One goes with moles. So all I do is divide since I have one number on top, one number on bottom. When I divide in the calculator, I get 1.9982.
but I started with three significant figures. So that's my first sig fig, second, and third. So that nine is either going to stay a nine or round up. Looking at the number afterwards, I see it's an eight, so it's going to round it up. Since that's a nine, I have to round, giving me 2.00 moles. Notice that my grams canceled out. So 2.00 moles of calcium carbonate. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can get this one on your own. Restart when you get stuck or have an answer. So you should have started with what was given. It doesn't matter that this one gave me moles while the previous problem gave me grams. Whatever number is given with unit is going to go in the upper left corner. Lithium nitrate is LiNO3 since it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Since this is moles of lithium nitrate, moles of lithium nitrate have to go on bottom so they can cancel. And I'm converting those moles to grams. Just as we saw a few minutes ago, one always goes with moles in this unit. So one mole equals so many grams. The grams I get from the periodic table, you should have gotten 68.95 grams. And in this case, I'm going to multiply because both numbers are on top. Plugging that in, we get 13.583. I had three sig figs, so that's one, two, three. That five rounds up due to that being an eight afterwards. So 13.6 grams lithium nitrate. This one's a little bit trickier because they don't want grams, or they didn't give us grams, they gave us kilograms. So we're going to have to do a conversion before we can use our grams to mole conversion. But we're going to start off the exact same way as what we've done before. We're going to start with the number and unit that's given. So I have 0 .100 kilograms of water. So whatever units here, I know, must go down here. So that's going to be kilograms of water. And I'm trying to use my conversion of one mole equals so many grams. So I need to convert kilograms to grams. I could plug those in, but I like to finish all of my units and then go back and plug in numbers. So my kilogram can cancel since this is grams. This also has to be grams because they have to cancel out by being diagonal. And if I have grams of water, then I can convert to moles of water. So notice I just had one extra step. I had to convert kilograms to grams before I could do the conversion that we were using a minute ago. So now I have to remember that kilo is the bigger one. So one kilogram is a thousand grams. And over here, I've got to put my one with moles. One mole is equal to so many grams. And remember, we get those grams from the periodic table. Each hydrogen is 1.01 .01 and oxygen is 16. So that's 18.02 because I'm multiplying this one by two. So in this case, I'm going to multiply and then I'm going to divide. In the calculator, I get this, and again, I wanted three sig figs. It's not always the case. One, two, three, rounds up again. So 5.55 moles of water. Go 
ahead and pause the video and try this last one on your own. Restart when you have an answer. So this one was also tricky because we had iodine, which meant the formula was I2, not I. So if you just used one I, then your molar mass would be off. So you should have said that you started with 0 0.200 moles of I2, which meant moles of I2 had to go on bottom. And since I have moles, I can go directly to grams. But I don't want grams, I want milligrams, which means I need one more step, grams to milligrams. Now I can start plugging in. One mole equals so many grams. Well, each iodine is 126.91, so 253.82. Again, had you not realized that was diatomic, that mass would have been half that amount, and your final answer would have been off. For grams and milligrams, grams is the bigger number, so the one goes with grams. And there's 1,000 milligrams in one gram. In this case, all of our numbers are on top, so we're just going to multiply everything on top. In the calculator, you should have gotten that. And we wanted three sig figs. Remember that beginning zero is not counting. So that's one, two, three. You cannot have 508. Because 508 is not the same thing as 50,764. So I need to add those last two zeros because they're placeholders. So that's one way I could have written my answer. The other way I could have put it in scientific notation and said 5.08 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, 4 milligrams of iodine. The problem didn't specify if it had to be in scientific notation, so either of the boxed answers are correct. But you did need the answers that are written there. Not 507, not 50700, but the two answers in the boxes.